Hi, today I'm going to be speaking about Fiverr, the company who has gone up almost 70% in the last two months during coronavirus. And I'm here to update. This will be the fourth video in the installment series. And stick with me, I'm going to explain to you why this company is going up so strong. See you in a bit. Welcome back. My name is Alex Ko and this is Family Investment Channel on my YouTube here. And today I'm going to speak about how Fiverr, why Fiverr has gone up so much in the last two months, even though we are on the lockdown, the coronavirus in the UK, in the US, in many parts of the world, and yet this company has done really, really well. So I'm a personal investor of, investor of Fiverr. I've got about 383 Fiverr stocks. And if you check my previous video, my aim is to get a thousand Fiverr stocks before it goes big. So I'm trying to save as much and try to buy. I'm at 383 and I average about $28 uh, for Fiverr. So average, and my profit is about $4,000 uh, on Fiverr stock just now. Total holding about 15000 on Fiverr stock. So I'm quite proud. It's for the long run. Uh, I think it's too grow. We're still at the really early stages of Fiverr exponential growth so i'm doing this video to update because and also this update before the earnings because loads of people have been asking should we sell now what do we do why are they up there's not much news on fiverr it seems that like i'm the only person on youtube and also blogs that covers fiverr most of the time so i thought as a responsibility as a shareholder let's share this with the world so Fiverr stock. Why is Fiverr going up so well? Coronavirus, nobody's working, you know, the whole world is on a lockdown, we're all staying put, but yet it's still growing. Why? So I'm here to break it down why. So any rumors about Fiverr? I would say no, nope. no rumors about Fiverr. Any improvement in the ratings? I've looked. The last rating to overweight was by JP Morgan and JP Securities. There was in back in uh, February, back in March. So there's no really changes in the ratings from this professional institution. So there's nothing that's really bumped them up. Uh, are there new products? I would say not really. All the products came out in like December or like, you know, uh, products for, for gamers platform, for video editing, the pro services. So nothing has really changed since then. So there's no real reason why it should go almost 70, 75% growth. Any new investors, any new big investors? Again, no. Any insider buyings, any of these whole shareholders, existing directors buying more shares? I've checked again. No, there's nothing that's drastically changed the scope of the horizon for Fiverr and it's still growing. So let me explain to you why it's gone up so, so much. Three reason, three reason why I can find myself. Firstly, which is one of the biggest reasons why is the letter from the CEO of Fiverr himself that was released on the 8th of April. A white paper, about three to four pages, a really honest letter out to shareholders and also announcing that there will be uh, the earnings call. So the earnings call for Fiverr will be on the 7th of May as released on this video today, it's recorded just pre to the release call on the 2nd of May. But this letter was released on the 8th of April, simply explaining the impact of coronavirus. So in the first two weeks of the coronavirus, there was a huge lockdown. When it happened in the lockdown, around about February, March period, there was a decline in sales, decline in sellers, decline in buyers. So people all just on lockdown, people were confused. And then the CEO explained that after two weeks, people were locked at home and they needed uh, needed income. So sellers started coming, people started joining up selling services. You know, they might be designers, they might be architects, they might be music producers, all the jobs that you can do right at your very home, like why I am now, like as a YouTuber. So things were growing. There were no details. I repeat, no details or the numbers of the growth, but the wording was really promising, you know, at the release of April saying that there were more growth people coming in, companies are using Fiverr to do professional work. And then there was growth and they're confident that might beat their uh, expectation output. Confident, but not confirmed. He did state that, you know, he, he because it's still April, still a month away 
from them collating the results for the earnings call. But they were, the outlook looks confident. That was one of the key reasons. I'll leave the link below for the investor relation lattice on the 8th of April for you to have a read and make your own judgment as well. And the second reason, the second reason why is uh, freelancing has become a work from home economy. It's not just Fiverr, it's Upwork, it's freelancers.com. They're getting a lot of volume of work. Buyers and sellers, it's just basically simply people, loads of interaction, loads of activities going on. Ah, look at the Upwork share price. They've gone up almost 80% as well. You know, a bigger company, by the way, I think they're worth about three to four billion pounds, whereas Fiverr's worth about one billion pounds. And activity has been growing, so everybody is taking advantage of this work from home economy. Even myself, I am also a seller on Fiverr. I write uh, uh, technical business notes and uh, technical analysis and I sell uh, services. And I've been getting a lot of uh, uh, jobs from Fiverr itself, not just my YouTubing life. I'm getting lots of side hustle jobs you know, from Fiverr. So uh, things are going on really, really well. So Fiverr is becoming, uh, not just Fiverr, freelancing economy, online freelancing economy is really, really growing. So that's the second reason why people are getting a bit of confidence that they think this is part of work from home economy stock that might benefit from all the lockdown that people are going through. So if you guys are thinking of investing in Fiverr stock, remember to go to Trading212, Trading212 here, and if you join Trading212, you'll get one free stock and I'll get one free stock up to 100 pounds. So join Trading212 and invest in Fiverr if you think Fiverr is a good company to invest. Thank you. And the third one, third one, I suppose, is just a speculation on growth and profit bearing. So the third one is basically me. Now I'm going to dig into the technical analysis. The technical analysis that people, I'm trying to forecast, investors, shareholders are thinking that Fiverr is actually worth more than $25. That's where the baseline was. They're actually worth more than $25. And then people investing, they're worth more than $30, $35, $38. And now they're hitting almost $40 a share, which is higher than what the IPO release was, which is really, really good. So as you can see, the earnings, the upgrades, overweight from JP Morgan, neutral from Citigroup, uh, not many not many professional uh, ratings out there because they're still a small-ish American company. On the, to the technical part, you can see the earnings for the last three quarters. They've always been beating their earnings, expectation beating, expectation beating. And now we are on an expectation of Q1 of minus 0.5 EPS. So earnings per share is still negative. They're not going to make profit. But because they're hovering around the 0.15 basis, they're looking that if they do really well as what we expect, but it's only a month since the release, if we do well, we might even make profit or break even. And that would be really, really good news. Making profit, I think less likely. And if they do make profit, they'll go really, really far. So they expected to be minus, just above minus 1.5. So from the letter itself, it shows that they might be able to beat it. That's why people are confident. They're pushing the share price up. And then on the earnings, to do that, you can see as the earnings go by the quarter, the expenses is getting smaller, hence the revenue increases, and the revenue sales is going up as well. It's beating by 20% each quarter. So it's looking really positive. And as a letter saying, it's growing more than what they expected. You know, who knows? They might spring out a surprise for us. And, uh, and, where do we really stand? Where do we really stand? So I'm going to bring this other chart here, which I do a couple of trended lines, a couple of support lines. So if you see on the chart, through COVID, uh, the COVID-19 impact, you can see the, the, the bullish market, just people just selling off. People are just worried, just selling off. Every stock is the same. It's not just fiber. Every stock fell. The oil, uh, commodities, uh, tax stocks, they were just falling after, during the month of March. And then towards the end of March, it starts picking up. And as you can see, like I mentioned, there was a support line round about just below 25 and support line just below 30 and support line just below 35. So every week, the support line has been just been broken. The ceiling has been broken. And you can see big volumes coming in, three big volumes coming in, maybe institutional or maybe uh, larger investors. But bearing in mind, you know, Fiverr is under a billion dollar stock. So... These volumes are really small compared to likes of Facebook and Netflix, really, really small, but it can it can move its, its indicator a bit more. 
as you can see, as, as it stands, the graph is going up the way. And at 39, you know, hovering 39, $40. Me, at this EPS, if it's EPS about nearing to break even, I think $40. $40 indicates that they're nearing to break even. If they come out this quarter saying they're breaking even, I think $40 is quite a good justification. If they spring a surprise, the last four weeks, so much volume coming in and making profit, they might even break the barrier of, of 50 bucks. I see that light less likely to happen. You need to give them time. Give them time, maybe two more quarters, maybe towards the end of the year if it goes this well. But don't don't be too ambitious thinking that you go over 40. So at where we are now, that this is quite stable if we hit the you know EPS ratio, but just above you know minus one, 0 0.1, right about that mark. And um also, the other warning that we bear in mind, if, if the earning calls come out on the 7th of May, and if it's not what we expected, or it's just borderline, not what the latter anticipation was, then we could potentially fall three floors down up to around about the $28, $30 mark. So be careful on buying in now. You have to think about your risk, your diversification. If you're buying at the range of 38, 39, 40, you are buying because you think they will make profit or break even breaking even or make profit. But if you're not confident that that will happen, you think that might drop below 30, then there you go. But when the announce come out, a bit of bad news, maybe they just missed it, or maybe uh, they're not making what the, the investors are expecting, they might drop round about the 30 mark, 31, 32 mark. So be patient with this stock. Plenty of room, plenty of time to buy. So that's my speculation. That's the graph up there. I'll leave it on my website link for you to dwell a bit more. Uh, link below to my, my website and you can go and have a look at this technical analysis and, and you know, just, just study it before you make a decision to, to call or to hold for future. So I hope you find it useful. Leave your comments below. I hope to release another video when the, the earnings come out so that explain what has breakdown, what's happened. And hopefully I own this uh, Fiverr stock on YouTube and I'll be the guy that's uh, explaining about Fiverr and sharing my journey, how I make, you know, my financial freedom from uh, such a small company and grew along with the investment. So I hope you enjoy, click that like and subscribe, share your friends and family and uh, hope you find this information useful, make your own decision. But if you have any query, leave a comment below, and tell me what you think. I will share what I think. So have a good day. See you in the next video after the 7th of May. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.